so it's it's Christmas and you know sometimes we get so wrapped up in the whole Christmas thing but tonight I just want to bring something a little bit different because we concentrate on Christmas and then we've got New Year and people make some great claims about what's going to happen in the New Year but I just want to bring some thoughts that are going to help us to to look for God to guide us throughout 2020. Now you're thinking you're a week early and, and the fact is I am but we need to be thinking about these things even before it starts to happen. We need to be asking God to guide us through the next year and the next few years of our lives so that, let's face it, sometimes when I make my own decisions, it usually ends in a mess. Now I have, I have great wisdom, her name's Jo, and she sometimes guides me, and sometimes I need a higher authority than Jo. And uh, you know, so sometimes we all need a little bit of guidance. So there's a, a little bit in the Bible that I'm going to read to you. And this is in the message version, just to help us uh, think of it again, because it's part of the Proverbs, and we get so familiar with them, but it's good to listen to it from a different translation. So this is what it says. It says, good friends, don't forget all that I've taught you. I mean, I could be telling you this, couldn't I? Good friends, don't forget anything I've told you throughout this last year. I mean, he says, take to heart my commands. Well, I've actually not been given any commands, but take to heart my commands. They will help you live a long, long time, a long life full and full and well. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Don't lose your grip on love and loyalty. Tie them around your neck. Carve them in the, their initials into your heart. Earn a reputation for living well in God's eyes and in the eyes of people. Trust God from the bottom of your hearts. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God, run from evil. Um, your body will grow weary, with, uh, will glow sorry, with health, and your bones will vibrate or, <laughs> with life. That's the message version of Proverbs 3, 1 to 8. So we often have these great famous words, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. In this time of year, we're often thinking about Christmas and we can actually miss the point of what Christmas is really about. We can get so carried away in everything, but we miss really what life's really about. You know, Eskimos, those people live in the north, they're north for us. They have roads and they have tracks and they get around in the snowy areas, especially in North Alaska. But it often can be dangerous traveling from place to place. But they've got methods and ways because a, a natural track will soon snow over. A road could be covered. It could be there one day and then gone and then come back. You know, it depends on the weather. But they've got a few ideas of what they do to stop them freezing to death or getting lost or just mislaid. They actually mark out their tracks. They mark where they've been. And they often build tripods out of, out of branches, out of, you know, logs, and put these huge, big tripods up, one every so often, so they can direct themselves. Because if you've ever been hiking with me, I'm not a fair weather hiker. Sometimes we go hiking and you can't see a thing. In fact, I took a crowd of you guys up Ingleburn and we couldn't see a thing. And you need to be able to know where you're going and what you're doing. You need markers in your life to help you. Now the Word of God, the Bible, it, is like a marker and God's amazing that as you read the Bible it leaves markers for you. It leaves a track for you and that's the one thing I love about God. You know I wish sometimes he'd just unload everything like the Matrix if you've ever seen that film. Just pour it straight in there but God doesn't do that. He just develops it gently with us. Step by step, little by little and life for us is made up of all our choices and sometimes we make choices with no idea of the consequences. I mean, you buy a kid a bag of sweets and does it matter? Well you can ask the parents later on when they've eaten them all and they're hyper at midnight. You know, sometimes we don't think of the consequences. But God knows the future. 
and he knows where we are right now. And as Christians, as, as people that's looking for somebody to guide us in our lives, then maybe it's good to look at the markers that God's got for us. I don't know about you, but if I look at my own life, in my history, often when times got hard and rough, I just look further back than that and realise I'd made, made some choices that weren't wise. They looked good at the time, they were quite exciting. Sometimes I knew they were wrong, but I did them anyway. But more often than not, when I went flat on my face, as it were, I could look back to a decision made that wasn't that wise. And I see people all the time making decisions that are not wise, but it looks good and feels good in the moment. But it's not healthy as they, co as they continue. So I put a few things down here, a three-point sermon. This is good, isn't it? If, you, if you're into sermons, write three points. They are. So... Um, I've got a word I can't even read anymore. <laughs> Pre-requirements, we'll put it that way. Pre um, Prerequisites. That's the one, prerequisites. <laughs> <laughs> Point number one, prerequisites, because that's Joe how to, what's it, I didn't pronounce it, prerequisites for God's guidance in our lives. The first one is to have confidence in God. First one is to have confidence in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, it doesn't mean you can't trust your spouse. It doesn't mean you can't trust your relatives and people that care for you, but at the end of the day, trusting in God with all hearts is the number one aid to guide us. This is what the Bible says. This is a psalm, and it says this, Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted in you, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and you, they were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. Now, that's interesting about those guys. That's why I love testimonies. Because you can say that, you know, in the past, God helped me here. And in the past, God helped me there. And now in this trouble, God's going to help me again. Amen. Because he did it then. And he's done it on the other side. And he's helping me. And because he's done it once for me, he can do it for you. Yes. And the good news is that if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. Why? Because he thinks you're amazing. Yes. I think God just feels sorry for me, but he thinks you're amazing. He's got a great plan, and I mean, God's just got a plan for me, so that I know the plans are for you, Johnny, plans to prosper, not to harm you. But for you guys, he's got a great plan. Amen. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Maybe not then. Maybe it's just a plan, okay. But either way, God's still excited about you. You know, we can see how God helps people in our past, and how he's helped people, and how he can help us. And knowing that he's helped people and that he's helped us, we can trust in him again. Yeah. Now, if nobody gets me any, you know, karate and <laughs> links or all that, I'll just get my own. I can't trust people to get that. Int. <laughs> to my, no, presents are already bought. We're under a tree. But we can trust in God. Yeah. The thing about God is, he doesn't always give us what we scream out for now. He'll guide us in what he knows we need in the future. Sometimes we scream out and we want something. Now, 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 now. And God's going, grow, will you? I know, I know God's not PC. God just says it as it is. But he will tell us to grow up and he will tell us to move. So the second one in, this, in, in just moving forward, the, the prerequisite, is to actually, the second prerequisite I've wrote down here, is to be cautious regarding oneself. He says, lean not on your own understanding. Yeah. Guys, even if you've got a decent phone with Google on it, you're not going to know everything. Okay, so you think you know it all, <laughs> but you don't. Google doesn't even know it all. So how can we trust in ourselves, even if we have got a laptop and a phone and we can Google it, or Yahoo it if you're old, yeah. or whatever, <laughs> and you can get all the information, won't you still... He can't trust, he says, he says, what's it? And lean not on your own understanding. Man's wisdom is actually foolishness to God. I like telling God a few things. And I think God must laugh and smile. And when I get to heaven, I'll probably go, come here, I want to have a word with you. You said this, what a man. But he's a great, gracious, loving dad, isn't he? And like our own kids say to me, and you look at them and you just smile. I mean, if you've ever had kids or grandkids, you'll know it. They say some great stuff and you just nod, thinking, 
when you get older, you'll just look at that going, how ridiculous that is. Not my two, of course. I mean, they're perfect. <laughs> really, yeah. So, don't trust in your own understanding, but trust in God. And the third uh, prerequisite for these things, because I'm, I'm losing how to say that word, is in all your ways acknowledge Him. So, trust in God with all your heart. Don't rely on your own understanding intellect, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him. I thank you that you're here. Just thank you. I once had a bit of rebellious time in my life, many, 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 many years ago, before I was married, before I'd met Joe. I decided I was going to go back into a place that I'd come out of, um, back into his nightclub, and I went into his nightclub. And I, I was a, I'd been a Christian, and I just, I, I don't know, I was having a bad week, month, year, bad time, whatever. Yeah. It could have been just one of the moments. So I went into a nightclub. And I, I'd worked in that nightclub before, so I knew it, and I'm standing there, and I went up to the barman, and the barman said, what would you like? And I went, um, can I have a Coke, please? I mean, that's a really good step forward to rebellion, isn't it? I want a Coke. So I got my pint of Coke, and I went off, and I'm standing there, and I'm just watching what's going on, and I'm thinking, I'm really rebelling here. And someone says to me, hey, look, Johnny, I've not seen you for ages, how are you doing? So I'm chatting away to him, and he said, I heard you become a Christian. I said, I have. I said, Jesus has changed my life. And I'm thinking, I'm going to make, stop, stop. I'm supposed to be rebellion. I'm supposed to be. And I'm telling this person about Jesus. And it was almost like the Holy Spirit were laughing, going, you, didn't think, you, know, you do know I come in these places. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I can't even rebel. And I, I was just having a pity party, really. I drunk my cup, talked to him about God, and then it got too loud, so I went home. But the thing was, it all, is you can't, you can't rely on your own understanding, but in all your ways, you can acknowledge him. Yeah. And I told this person about Jesus and his love, and I just acknowledged that Jesus was there. And it was almost like he got with scruff and neck, and he says, you're coming out now, come on. So we need just to acknowledge him, trust him, and be aware. This is what a verse that I, I mentioned earlier, and where God says, he says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, and not for disaster. They are to give you a future and hope. You see, our plans, we try to make plans that will be the best for us. But only God knows what tomorrow has. I mean, sometimes, have you ever wondered that your car doesn't start as quick as it had done? Or it takes you longer to defrost it? Or maybe somebody's in front of you going really slow and they're annoying you? Or is that just me? Because maybe down the road, there's somebody's just going to pull out of the junction and that poor old the person in front of you who's slowing you down in life and you want to strangle them is maybe stopping you getting into an accident further down. See, we don't know the bigger scheme of things, but God knows it all. He knows the plans he's got for us. He knows our purposes. So, the second one is the promises that God promises to guide us. So, God promises to guide us. He says, and he shall direct your ways. I mean, if you ever come to a junction, and we don't see this much in our country, but if you're driving to a junction and there's a police officer standing there and he goes, stop that way, you don't go that way, do you? No. If a copper stops you and goes, you're going that way, you go that way. Yeah. If you're out on the street and there's an incident and a police officer says to you, stop, you're going that way, then that's where you go. And sometimes when the armed forces come out and they've got a gun and they say, Alt, back up, you back up. Yeah. It's kind of common sense, you know what I mean? I know when we were in the US, I was watching around all the time to see somebody getting arrested. But we didn't see anybody, there were not like that going on. Just so they can see him pull a gun, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and see what happened. But it says that he will direct your ways. He doesn't say that God will direct the pastor's ways. He says, God will direct your ways. Yours, mine, every one of us. He's a loving father that guides his children in their daily lives. And sometimes, as good parents that many of you are, sometimes you've got to make decisions that the child might not like. You might have to make decisions that the husband don't like sometimes, putting the sprouts on the plates. I mean, why? Why? I just think sprouts are just cabbages 
little drops have dropped off. <laughs> Why sprouts? I just think there's some of that. I think sprouts only came about after the fall. You know, thorns, thistles and sprouts. <laughs> I can understand cauliflower and broccoli because they look pretty, but sprouts. The only good thing about a sprout is if you actually boil them a little bit and then you can catapult them. Oh. They're all right then. <laughs> so I've completely lost where I'm at now. So, as Christians, we, <laughs> we should never wonder or worry about if God's guiding us. You shouldn't wonder if he is or not, because he is. And you shouldn't worry about whether he's or not, because he is. His guidance is personal. He wants us to direct us and he wants our paths to be straight. And he wants us to get to the end of the journey safe. God's guidance is practical. He's a peaser, all these. The Lord is, is very interested in direct, directing us in every area of our lives and in every circumstances. God's guidance is perfect. It's infallible, it's reliable, it's trustworthy. Another piece you'll get one. It's divine. It's God's guidance is patient. Amen. Ours isn't. His is. Yeah. We always want to get there now. Mm. Have you ever pulled up at McDonald's? Not that we go there, because I just... Ugh. Burger King, maybe. <laughs> and you've looked in the window, because the queue outside is really long in the cars, mm. and you think if I nip inside, it'd be quicker than queuing up outside. It's only me that's done that. Yeah. Yeah, you just think I'm off inside, it's quicker. Yeah. But... We want everything now, but God leads us. He leads his children step by step. In fact, Psalm 23, a famous psalm, says this. He, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. Sometimes we want to get up and go and he says, just calm it. Hold back, rest. When God tells us to rest, it's because we're going to need the energy later on. The third point I put down here. The principles for divine, these are some principles for divine guidance or God's guidance. And there's really only one principle, and it's submit to God. That's it. That's the ultimate, is to submit to God. Romans 12 verse 1, it says this, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. One of the problems about being a living sacrifice is that we wriggle around and get off the altar, as it were, and do our own thing. But God wants us to be submissive and willing and just honouring him and being there for him. And like, he doesn't want to be like a sergeant major who snapped his heels and goes, do this, and you go, yes, sir, even though there should be an element of that. He wants us to be like children when dad instructs us, we go, because I know he loves me, I will do what he says. He doesn't want me, yes sir. He wants that I'm going to do it, because I know you care for me. The Lord is not looking for a better method, a bigger, he's not looking for bigger people, or, you know, he's not looking for, for great men. He's looking for men and women who will surrender their hearts to him. You see, Jesus came at Christmas time, that's when we celebrate it, it wasn't quite Christmas time. That's when we celebrate it. And he left the throne room of heaven. Where angels, I mean, there was no sin there. It was perfect. When he said something, it happened. You know, it, well, he, didn't, he wasn't hungry. He, didn't, he wasn't cold, thirsty, or anything like that. He wasn't in pain. And he left that throne room and came down to earth to show that he, wanted, he loved us so much. And he died on an horrendous cross. He was buried. And he was in there three days when he rose to life again. Amen. And he ascended. And then he said he showed himself to people for over 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven. He knows what it's like to be you. He knows what it's like. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was in pain. He was betrayed. He was hurt emotionally, physically. He went through all these different things. He knows what it's like to be you. So when he says, let me guide you, he already knows. He's been there. The Lord is not looking for superheroes. He's looking for people who say, I surrender. Submit to God, the, the Bible says. Resist the devil and he will flee. But God's saying, just submit to me. Another, pr pr another principle of divine guidance is to actually look at the Bible. Psalm 119, it's a big one is this one, verse 105, 
It says this uh, when I quickly find it. Da, 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 da. I've got to remember because I've not wrote it down. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Bible is a light for us. It's a guidepost. It's, it's, it's the first place. I mean, if you've ever read the Narnia book, especially the line, The Witch of the Wardrobe, there's a lamppost there. It's a guiding beacon for them. And they come back to it every time. The word of God is like that. The Bible says this. It says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God. You know, is anybody lacking in wisdom? Especially concerning your future. I mean, we all could put our hands up to that one, can't we? It says, let us ask God who gives to all who ask uh, liberally without finding fault. And it will be given to him. If we ask for wisdom, guess what he'll do? He'll give us wisdom. And then, when we've asked for wisdom, we can't act so stupid, can we? <laughs> and, yeah, okay. <coughs> wisdom, I think God likes to have some fun with us. But at the end of the day, he likes us to be wise. Okay, in conclusion, the great question is not, will God guide us through 2020? But am I willing to be led through 2020? Yeah. The question is not, will God lead you? The question is, will you be led? Yeah. <clears throat> I've been on, like I said, many walks, many hikes. And when I, generally when everything's going okay, it's fine. It's when there's a problem, when you need somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And that's usually when I kick in, because when something's gone wrong, that's it. And the last time we got into a bit of a storm, I had to march, several people took my two down, down the hill so far, put me in a safe place, then went back up the hill to make sure the rest of them were coming down. And I was trying to guide people down, giving them encouragement, giving them instruction, sometimes shouting at them. Because they were gonna go, but it was when there was a storm, we were on pen again. The winds were 85, 90 miles an hour, and people were just being a little silly sometimes. And I'm shouting at them to not do certain things and to do certain things. But sometimes we all want the idea of God guiding us. But God's not saying he is or is not going to guide us because he always will. He's saying, will you be led? Now these people I went walking with, because they knew I knew a lot about hiking and I've been up that hill many times, they let me lead them down the hill. The question is though, will we let God lead our lives? Are you willing to do whatever he asks, whenever he asks it, and whatever he asks? He has a plan, and his plan for you is perfect. His plans are pleasant. And in his presence, he promises, his promise is for every step that we take. A guy once said this, to know the will of God is the greatest knowledge. To do the will of God is the greatest achievement. And over the next few weeks I suggest that you maybe talk to God and say what plans have you got for me next year God what plans have you got for me where do we start well it starts in the word of God but what have you got for me you see you might have great dreams and great hopes and you'll do whatever you can to get them but God's got a perfect plan for your life that probably includes a lot of your dreams and hopes but only he'll probably get you there or at least if you get there on your own, it'll be a real struggle. In Jesus, it's about just trusting him. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I just thank you for everyone here right now. And I pray that you will continue to guide us. But Lord, not, it's not on your side that the problem is. It's on ours. <coughs> Lord, I pray for everybody here that we may allow you to lead us. Step by step, little by little. Lord, into your presence and into your perfect will for our lives. Amen. 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 You know what's coming? Cup of tea time. <laughs>